Welcome to Burning Bright, a weekly podcast presenting poetry and prose from Passager. She was in a uh, poetry workshop with Robert Lowell, and it was very hard to get into that workshop. People were hanging out the doors trying to listen to it, you know, and so she, she was a pretty good poet. She got in. And so the first class, Robert Lowell says to the is selected students, who is your favorite poet? There's no right or wrong answers. So, you know, first Harvard student said, well, I have to take the bard. And the second one said, oh, you, sir. And Dolly said, Edna St. Vincent Millay. And Robert Lowell looked at her and he said, well, I guess there are wrong answers. That was Joyce Schmidt talking about her sister Dolly. Joyce was the winner of the 2024 Passager Poetry Contest. The brand new issue of Passager features five poems by Joyce about her sister. Passager intern and Middlebury College student Ruby Taylor interviewed Joyce about her poetry, her influences, and more. This episode of Burning Bright features excerpts from that interview. And here's Ruby. Thanks, John. I have to say that being myself a mere summer intern, I couldn't help but shake a bit with nerves as I sat down to interview an award-winning poet. But I lit a metaphorical candle, said my prayers, and sent a Zoom link across the country to Joyce Schmidt. Within the first few moments of our conversation, my anxiety quickly dissipated. In addition to being a brilliant and thoughtful poet, Joyce is a deeply kind and effusive presence. Joyce and I discussed her favorite poets, her own writing process, her experience growing up around literature and music, and her late sister, Dolly. When I asked about the start of her poetry career, Joyce told me that it began at age two with a, quote, potty-related rhyming bit of gobbledygook. Her words. It almost ended a few years later, but she persevered. Probably the next poem I remember writing after that one was uh, a poem I wrote in an elementary school, and I showed it to my uncle, who later became a uh, English professor. And he said, that is really trite. So I didn't write again until high school. <laughs> and then I wrote a little bit in high school. Most of my life, I just wrote when I was upset about something. And so I would only write a couple of things a year. As an older adult, Joyce began to approach her work more seriously. And then maybe eight years ago or so, I thought, you know, I'm getting old. I think if I'm going to write poetry, this is the time. So I signed up for my first poetry workshop at Stanford, and I wrote something every single morning. I would get up early and uh, just write something every morning. And I did that probably for two, three, maybe four years. Stanford gives some wonderful classes in their uh, continuing studies. And I just saw this poetry workshop. And it was such good luck that I found that because it was given by a lady named Kimberly Gray, who is an excellent, wonderful poet and um, just one of the world's best teachers. And it just makes you want to write. I wrote a lot about the natural environment, you know, where I would walk and what I would observe. And I wrote a lot about the drought. I live in California and California was in a drought. I wrote a lot about that. I wrote it mostly, I think, about my husband and our relationship and just how grateful I am for it. When I inquired about Joyce's creative process, or how she writes, she gave an example of how a morning thought finds its way to becoming a poem. I was walking down the street, taking my daily walk, and I noticed a rose bush. And I had a thought about the rose bush. And sort of per percolated in my mind for a while. And then I read another poem that had a line that was a translation from Sappho that was really beautiful. And I just wrote it down. And I thought, I like this line. And then I went home and wrote a poem about the rose using that line with attribution, of course. And um, all, all week, I kind of pecked away at it. And I thought, no, that's not the right word. What word do I want there? So I went to my trusty thesaurus and looked at all the words and said, no, I don't like any of those. And... You know, I struggled with a couple of words like that until I found and thought of the one that I thought, okay, that's what I'm trying to say. And yeah, so it, it's a work in progress. Part of a poet's process is about the writing itself. Another part is about the people they've read. 
my favorite poet was Yeats. And I loved him so much. I, I had a wonderful tutorial in college. And what it consisted of was I would go to this guy's room and he would read me poems of William Butler Yeats. And then he would look at me and he would say, I'm going to cry. He would say, isn't that beautiful? And that's what it was. He told me a little bit about Yeats's politics, about Maud Gunn, about, you know, Irish, all that. But he was the only one in my whole education who ever even mentioned the beauty of literature. And I think that's probably why I, I loved Yeats so much. She went on to feature Mark Doty, Seamus Heaney, Edward Hirsch, even Boland, Gerard Manley Hopkins, and W.S. Merwin on her all-time favorite poets list. Joyce made sure to note that these poets are not just artists she loves. They're part of how she writes, how she thinks, and who she is. The poets that I love are always part of my consciousness. And I have been known to quote them and think about them. Like just yesterday, I was reading something in my class, and I was echoing a line of Yeats. Sometimes if I write something, I'm not sure it's mine. I get a little scared. I, I start Googling the lines and I think, have I read this before? And if they don't show up on Google, then I think, oh, I guess I did. But I still wonder sometimes. Yeah, the line between where we end and they begin. Joyce and Dolly were not surprise poets. They come from a family where creativity and art were valued and shared. Their father was a talented violinist and music teacher, while their mother was an English teacher, writer, and unpublished poet. My maiden name is Garter, G-A-R-T-E-R. So and my father was a music teacher, and they called him Mr. Garter. And so, oddly enough, my first piano teacher's name was Mrs. Stocking. And so he called her up and he said, hello, Mrs. Stocking, this is Mr. Garter, and she hung up on him. But really, my first piano teacher was my father, who sat with me every day and taught me note by note to play things like at the age of five, I was playing something by Chopin called The Minute Waltz, uh, which I could never play today. I mean, but my father taught it to me. While Joyce's father taught her to play piano, her mother created the situation that led to her first publication. One time she published an article in a local paper, and it was about my experience at my high school prom. And she was talking about what a glorious experience it was for me and how there were stars in my eyes. And I was wore this beautiful dress. It was absolutely fabrication. And so then I wrote them an article and I said, nah, -uh, this is what it was really like. Those stars in my eyes, those were tears. And uh, <laughs> so they published mine too and they sent me money. It was wonderful. In addition to writing and spinning occasional half-truths, Joyce's mother made sure that poetry and literature were part of her girls' lives. She read us her poetry. She read lots of other people's poetry. She read to us all the time. She encouraged us to write poetry, and it was more that she read to us all the time, I think, that encouraged us to write, and it was sort of something that was done in our family, you know? You played music and you wrote poetry. And as a result of their shared early exposure to poetry or otherwise, both Joyce and Dolly did write. I asked Joyce to tell me about one particular poem, Dialogue with My Sister's Poems on the First Anniversary of Her Death in which she takes lines from her sister's college poems and responds to them retrospectively. I went through her poems and chose most of my favorite lines, mm -hmm. that just what I considered some of the best lines that she wrote. I think they were very, very much her, in the sense that she felt that uh, she had a choice between living in reality and not living in reality. And uh, she was very lyric. And if you read the poems, they're just... They're accessible, but they're not narrative. They're not, they're not weighed down by the details of the world. They're her world. Who will draw my bath? I mean, who would say that? But she would say that, you know? Here's Joyce reading dialogue with my sister's poems on the first anniversary of her death. Dialogue with my sister's poems on the first anniversary of her death. The earth is tilting toward the sun again. You stayed until the longest day, the maximum of light, the end of springtime, blue with flowers. I love to feel the fragrance of my flesh. Sometimes its tiny rhythms 
make my wrist an animal with soft skin. You let no rat, no ant, no fly be killed for you. You knew the fear endured by fragile things. One day the crowds will trample soft my arm like garbage. Who will hold me in the storm to warm me? Where will I draw my bath? Remember how as children we would plead for deeper water in our tub? Over my toes we'd beg. Remember how you'd stand and wash your face to rags, the water dripping down your elbows to the floor? As well would Andromache see sacred the ashes of her love seep in with the sewage of Athens, would I see mine, a peddler of erotic wares, rejected? And I rejected you. You called me thirty times a day. I said to call me only once. I didn't know how soon you'd barricade yourself inside your illness, fall and break. We chat of this and that. The only way to eat chicken is with your fingers. Yes, yes, that is the way we eat it in New York. New York. We ran from there until the other ocean stopped us. When you first went back, you shuddered like a galleon in a storm. The second time, when we returned our mother to her sacred dead, eclipse already in your brain, you barely cast a reddish glow. The heavens must select the worthier stuff to live. And then I felt all sacrificial, bound to die instead of better, stronger things, instead of you. That was Joyce Schmid reading her poem, Dialogue with My Sister's Poems, on the first anniversary of her death. As the title implies, Joyce wrote this poem one year after her sister died. What it doesn't tell you was that Dolly died on the summer solstice. Yeah, it, it's, it really, it somehow seemed special to me that if she had to die, she would die on the first day of summer. She waited for the longest day. Almost like she was trying to get the most out of life that she could. After the longest day, she didn't want to see it decrease. She didn't want to see it ebb. She didn't want to see the darkness come back. We've been listening to excerpts from Ruby Taylor's interview with 2024 Passenger Poetry Contest winner Joyce Schmid. If you'd like to read Joyce's poems about her sister Dolly as well as lots of other wonderful poems by 2024's Honorable Mentions, you can buy a copy of the 2024 Passager Poetry Contest issue. Or better yet, subscribe to Passager. You can do that and learn more about Passager and its commitment to writers over 50 at PassagerBooks.com. Special thanks to Passager intern and Middlebury College senior Ruby Taylor for producing and editing this interview with Joyce. For Kendra, Mary, Christine, Roseanne, and the rest of the passenger staff, I'm John Shore.